Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about my rack. I get a lot of questions from people that say, hey, Brandon, nice rack. And I think to myself, boom, boom, boom. I wish you were talking about something besides the equipment behind me, but that's okay, I'll talk about this as well. So I've had this rack for 14 months. It's a White Rogue RM3, and a lot of people really like the look of it, the Stormtrooper look, but they're worried to get white powder coat because they're worried that it's not gonna hold up well over time, which is an interesting conversation in and of itself and probably a topic for another video. Does it matter if your equipment gets beat up? Surprisingly, some people don't care, and more surprisingly, some people really care. I guess you can kind of tell where I fall into this group. Uh, but I wanna talk about how this thing is held up in case you're looking at getting something like this but have been worried in the past. Now, one of the things that really helps in my case is the fact that this is a monster series of rack which means for the UHMW on accessories, not only do you get the standard for the most part on the outside, wherever the barbell would touch, that way you're not damaging the accessory with your bar and the accessory is not damaging your bar itself. It's not metal on metal contact, but you also get UHMW on the inside, which is really nice because again, it's avoiding that metal on metal contact and instead giving you that buffer of UHMW to protect your accessory, but also protect your rack itself. And again, when you're moving this thing and repositioning it, you have a lot of contact there. And the fact that the UHMW in there, number one, protects the rack and accessory, as I've already mentioned, but it also makes the fitment of these a lot nicer. You don't usually get any slop with these, which is really good. Um, that being the case though, this rack is not free from what I would call UHMW skid marks. So instead of metal rubbing on metal, you have UHMW rubbing on metal, which with some of these tighter fits, or in the case of my safety straps, when you're doing pin presses or pin squats, or in my case, I do a lot of elevated pendlay rows where the bar is going to hit the straps pretty well with a loaded barbell. As I'll show you in this video, it's gonna put a little bit of stress on where that accessory attaches and that rubbing and tugging of the UHMW against it leaves skid marks. Now, the nice thing is, is even though there is some visible markings on the rack, it's not actual physical damage to the powder coat itself, which means with a rag and a little bit of deodorizing cleaner, which is all I have, I don't have actual cleaner for my rack because it doesn't get that dirty, uh, and a couple of seconds and some YouTube magic, I can take a lot of this stuff off really quickly and really easily. Not completely gone, but again, I don't have real cleaner here with me and I'm not really scrubbing away as I probably should, uh, but a lot of this stuff is removable if you just put some elbow grease into it. So that's a good sign. Now that's not to say that this rack is completely free of dings and everything else because even though the accessories themselves have UHMW on the outside, on the inside, the pins on them themselves are still metal. So you'll find when you look inside some of these holes, you'll have a lot of the powder coat rubbing off, but you're gonna have that regardless of it's a white, red, blue, black, green, yellow, whatever color rack you're getting, that's really a spot where you can't really avoid anything in this case unless someone's watching my video and wants to come up with something, that would be pretty cool. I think actually there's probably an easy way to do that. Just put like a plastic grommet in there and you're good. Thank me later. Um, when you take a look inside here, however, too, any rack, you're gonna have just some miscellaneous sprays because the powder coating can't really get inside too well. This rack has been in the garage, open air environment, 14 months. Summers have been pretty hot, up to 100 degrees. Humidity has been so-so, we're in Rhode Island, so we're in the Northeast, but I am by the salt water in the ocean. I don't have any oxidation on this rack anywhere. Even in the case where I have a little ding here in the powder coat because some idiot decided to unrack his squat bar and not pay attention as he tried to get it out, and that thing being a little bit wider, the RM3 being a little bit less shallow at 30 inches, I dinged it pretty good. Right within the first week or two that I had this. but. No damage and it's only slightly cosmetic. And to be honest, I kind of forgot about it until I made this video. So probably shouldn't have made this video. Uh, the other things on here that I want to point out is on the bottom cross members, there are some chipping of the powder coat, which was actually how I received them. Um, so I've actually noticed a lot of people these days, especially getting rogue stuff during the pandemic, it's great you guys are buying racks. However, rogue has changed their shipping policies on some of this stuff where in the past, I believe most racks would always ship freight meaning they come deliver them on a big box truck. They've switched that to ground shipping, which means people are handling your package a lot. That sounds terrible, but talking to a lot of people and seeing a lot of these videos on the internet of people with their Nest cams and doorbell cams, what happens is people end up 
not really caring for your box so much or your package. They throw them around, having heavy metal pieces inside there, not secured very well, or even if they're secured very well, if you throw something into a back of a truck, it could get banged up. A lot of people are seeing chipping in the powder coating before they arrive, which sucks, but again, it's not going to be any different regarding the color of the rack you get. So that's not just for these white racks, it's for any colored rack out there. A benefit of myself of having a YouTube channel where people tend to watch and I show a lot of the stuff that I have. Someone from Rogue saw this and was like, oh shit, you know, his thing's chipped, it's brand new, he makes YouTube videos, let's send him some new ones to replace them. So thank you, Rogue, for doing that. But again, it doesn't bother me that much and it's so minor because I'll show you the picture, of course. I actually have both of those new bottom cross members still in the box that they came in, all packaged up, because I just haven't felt the need to replace them just yet. Uh, but other than that, this thing is in very good shape. In fact, I actually think the white hides the dirt a little bit better. It is dusty and it's gross in here in the garage. I don't do a good job cleaning. When I do clean the garage, what I do is I kind of just get the important stuff out of the way and I get the leaf blower and just blow everything that way. So all the dust and debris, because I have my lawnmower right here, so every time I track it in and out, there's grass clippings, there's leaf clippings from the fall still. There's probably some dead bugs in here, a whole other stuff. Just blow everything that way. So this thing gets really dirty, but you don't actually see it on the white, surprisingly. In fact, if you take a look at the half rack feet I have on the front, they are actually easier to spot dirt on than it is the other portions of the rack. So the lighter color actually hides the dirt a little bit better, and you see it a little bit more clear on the darker color. But again, it's still there regardless. I just don't see it as much on here, surprisingly. Um, that being the case, I talked about the skid marks before. If you had a darker rack, you probably wouldn't notice them as much as you do on the white one, but again, you don't really notice them here, so it's not a big deal either way. So I guess long story short is if you're looking for a white powder coat rack and you've been hesitant to pull the trigger because you're afraid it's gonna get dirty, this one's gonna get dirty, but you're not really gonna see it and it holds up extremely well after 14 months. If I didn't answer anything you had a question on specifically, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be sure I do it. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.